Here we're going to briefly discuss differences between a reversible process and an irreversible process. And we'll do this mainly by looking at the properties of reversible processes and some examples. So the first is, as the name replies, that we can reverse it. So it means we're going along with some process. And at some instant in time, we decide we want to go in the other direction. And some very slight change allows us to do that. So, so one of the important ones when we look at a process that, is that it can be reversed. And this means at any time we could do that. The result of this, what, what it means is we're always at equilibrium. And we're just making infinitesimal changes from equilibrium. So resolve this, it means for a reversible process that we have no temperature or pressure gradients. In other words, if I have a gas at 10 bar pressure, it means that the gas is pushing up 10 bar and the weight of the piston and the weights on the piston equal a pressure of 10 bar. And of course, what we need to keep in mind is a reversible is just an ideal view of an actual process. And so the way of comparison, something we can make thermodynamic calculations for. Just look at some examples to give us a little better physical feeling for what we're talking about. And so let's imagine this is a cross section of a piston and cylinder. The piston has some weight. The gas is under pressure in this case because sitting on top of the piston is a liquid layer. And of course the liquid has some weight so that's causing the gas to remain at that pressure. The weight of the liquid plus the piston creates a pressure pushing down. Gas pushes up against it at the same pressure. So pressures are balanced. Everything's at the same temperature. This is at equilibrium. So if we very slowly add more liquid, so we slowly, so let's look at this. We essentially think if we're pouring in a very slow rate, liquid as we add more liquid the gas is going to move down so at a later time so at a later time we're going to have significantly more liquid sitting on top of the gas the gas is going to be a higher pressure it's in equilibrium and you can imagine at any instant we could just reverse this and start removing liquid could be as simple as some small valve on the side and we very slowly start taking liquid out instead of adding it now the gas pressure would decrease the gas would expand we're doing here everything isothermal or we could doing we could be doing everything adiabatically the result is the same we have a reversible process we can certainly add liquid or remove liquid at a very slow rate so we're always essentially at equilibrium. So it's a very good example of what we mean by reversible process. And let's look at another example of a reversible process. So here we're looking at a single component at vapor liquid equilibrium. The gas or the vapor is in equilibrium with the liquid. And the pressure is constant is indicated by a weight, say on a piston that we don't change. And so, if we were to add heat to this, we would start evaporating some of the liquid into the gas phase, the piston would move up. So then, at a later time, we'd have more vapor, more gas, we have slightly less liquid, since gas occupies a lot more volume than liquid, pressure is the same, the temperature is the same. The fact we added heat doesn't change the temperature because at constant pressure, single component's going to 
uh, evaporate at a one temperature. And so as we continue to add heat to maintain vapor liquid equilibrium, we have no pressure gradients, we have no temperature gradients, and so this process is reversible and that at any time we can start going in the other direction. If instead we start removing heat from this system, we're going to end up eventually back at this system. Every step of the way is in equilibrium. So, so vapor liquid equilibrium, single component, constant pressure, very good example of a reversible process and something that we can do practically. Now, if we look at, let's go back to single component. So now we have gas. It's at high pressure. And a reversible expansion, for example, reversible adiabatic expansion would be the system be insulated. And I've drawn a bunch of weights on top of the piston. And if I start taking off one weight at a time, First weight's taken off, the gas expands slightly, take off another weight, expands slightly more. If these weights are very small, so I have a very large number of them, then I am close to a reversible process, the uh, equivalent of the liquid, which I can remove incrementally, imagine removing incrementally very easily. This is a, then an approximation to that liquid of a reversible process. Well, what would an irreversible process look like for gas expansion? Let's look at one more example of an irreversible process. Here we imagine two containers at the same pressure but with different gases, and they're separated by some thin diaphragm. If I could quickly remove this diaphragm or punch a hole in the diaphragm, what's going to happen is nitrogen is going to diffuse in this direction because there's no nitrogen on the right side, and argon is going to diffuse in the opposite direction. And they'll keep doing so until the partial pressures are the same. If we instantaneously remove the diaphragm, and we can imagine doing that, they would much more quickly diffuse until the pressure of argon, the partial pressure is a half a bar, and the partial pressure of nitrogen is a half a bar, since they're the same volumes and they're at the same pressure. Clearly irreversible because we can't at any point stop and go in the other direction. So it's a good example of what we mean by irreversible process.